and gentlemen, coming to you live from the outskirts of the internet, this is the Gaming Saloon for November 16th, 2013, with your host, Peacebreaker2448, and Ramp It Epsilon. And yes, this is taking place during when TGSR normally occurs, but yeah. Flash player be went tomorrow. crashy, so that's why everything's pushed back a day. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and hopefully I will get to watch the subbed versions of, subbed version of episode 5 today. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get a chance to get around to the recap review. Hopefully it will be tomorrow before we do TJSR. It will. There is no way we're going to get through TGS and TGSR tonight. You know that. I know that. People out I there that tomorrow. are watching us know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant tomorrow. You'll have time. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. We've got a lot to talk about articles-wise. Plus a big topic that we'll probably get some pitchforks and torches brought out. A little oh, well. bit. <laughs> that normally, it, uh, I say that like that doesn't normally happen, <laughs> considering some of the things we say. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get the ball rolling on our big old batch of news. First up, something I threw in on headline alone: Google's MMO mobile game Ingress leaves beta in December. I I didn't even know Google had an MMO. I didn't until I saw the article. Yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, I, I know you're going to get into it, but in all honesty, if you travel a lot, this kind of would be a fun little thing to get on your... Android device and kind of use it as you're going. I don't see much use for it though, unless you travel a lot. <laughs> All right, uh, kind of hitting the high points of the article. Um, game is open is in beta right now. It's an open to all Android owners right now. Um, the official release is on December fourteenth, so less than a month away. Uh, do, 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 do. there's a deep backstory to the game and a lot of the game, a lot, and a lot going on gameplay wise. But in basic terms, Ingress involves two factions: the Enlightened and the Resistance, battling for the individual for their individual causes. Teams of real world players must work together to create in link portals using their mobile devices in public places around the world to score points for their side. Uh, become an excuse for players to go out and get out and explore. Uh, uh, bond over shared experiences. Uh, it's been downloaded over one million times, even though it's in only in beta. Uh, not expecting any of the normal problems that play console and PC MMOs when they go public. Uh, with Solar's experience and resources, he is confident they can in that the increased traffic from opening up the game will not will not present any technical problems. I think a lot of people have said that before, but yeah, but I think Google's actually got the resources to handle it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unlike yeah, a lot of the others. A... Yeah, yeah, I think Google's got the servers to do this. Um, beta is in preceded by a global game event called Project Magnus, which kicks off today. Players on the game's Enlightened Faction will attempt to piece together an entity known as Roland Javis. Meanwhile, Resistance players will be fighting to stop them. The game's website says the effort will literally span the globe as agents from over 200 countries will ingress where, where ingress is currently being played. Cooperate to achieve their goal. The effects of who emerges victorious will leave a lasting mark on the game's narrative and will also... Uh, herald the end of the beta period. That's kind of neat. Uh, do, 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 do. 
Ooh. Uh, do, 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 do. this isn't going to be something JJ Abrams like, where players are, uh, are left wondering about the ending. We're going to draw the narrative to a satisfying conclusion, it should take roughly 24 months. After that, depending on the player's reaction, Hawk says they could be a sequel, or the team may spin off into a new entirely. And that looks to it. Not much on the game itself. Thing in, it's in beta. Yeah, and I would venture to say most of the articles out there are going to be pointing towards, hey, go try it for yourself. It, they're not going to want to sit down and try to explain everything. Which, yeah. I can understand that. Uh, I do think, though, this is a good and new twist to MMOs. However, like I said before, you got into reading the article... If you don't travel much or you're not in a big city, it's not really going to give you the full effect. And that's all there is to it. Because it even tells you those, uh, let me make sure they did use the correct term in there. <laughs> I don't want to start yeah. saying something and confuse someone. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, those portals that it was talking about, you can only find them near landmarks and sculptures, which in some cases also includes churches and, like, major gaming places, I've noticed. Didn't notice that till today. GameStop's marked as one of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so f around here it's a good like five minute drive in between each portal <laughs> possibly <laughs> well it it's not a definite every church has one but I'm no I've noticed yeah. that seems to be the common themes there so really unless you're in a big city with a bunch of different structures you're pretty probably not going to get that full experience. Yeah. I mean, even in our town, from my house to the new Walmart, which is... Uh, Off towards Chattanooga. Well, I'm trying to think about how long of a drive that is. Probably 15 minutes tops. Uh, That's about right. There was this twenty from uh, where I am to Cleveland State, though. So. But, but within that distance, there was three spots that I could have easily accessed within that path. So that's kind of one of those. Unless you're gonna be traveling or going to a bigger city, then you're not really gonna get the full effect. What were the three spots? Well, one was GameStop, and the other two yeah. were churches that are right by my house. There was uh... that complete... No, I take that back. There was a fourth, and I think it was at that uh, fire station right there off of APD 40 there. Oh, right there where the restaurant and the, uh, yeah. the dealership is? Yep. Uh, that means that probably that could actually be there probably is a lot more if you go out towards Cleveland State because uh, there is a firehouse that's on on the way to Cleveland State and there's a GameStop Target. There's probably like more going out that way. Probably, but I'd still venture to say that in all of Cleveland, you're not going to have as much as if you were in like Chattanooga or Knoxville or. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the big cities that there is out there. I mean, I'd venture to say your smaller cities, you're not, you're going to get a good feel for the game. You're just probably not going to get the full experience that they're shooting for. Yeah. 
but especially that sharing your experience on the side of the road. Yeah, that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> I highly doubt that's going to happen. But I do think it is a good idea, and if they could maybe work towards doing something a little different with it, that might do even better. Yeah. Like maybe have one person and kind of divvy the whole United States or the whole world or whatever into different regions and kind of have like one or two people sitting there going through and making points. Yeah. That would probably benefit this game a lot better. Because, like I said, in that little distance, four of them. I do, yeah. I do re amend my statement there. Four of them, though. There's... There's stuff between here and there that I think could have been added into that. And I could be wrong. I, I'm at the beginning level of it, so I could be completely wrong. That might be something that you can do the higher levels you are, too. I, yeah. It's just one of those... Uh, <laughs> seems like it's not got the full capacity... Not yet, anyhow. Yeah, since I don't have an Android device, I'm not gonna be able to check. It. I might be able to convince my mom to download it, have her play it, but <laughs> she is more engrossed with a uh, Candy Crush than anything. Oh god, that game is addictive. <laughs> she... that that's her uh, that's her game. Oh that is God, game. That, that game is so addictive. Yeah, I have played it. It's just, she is into it. Of course, this is coming from the same person that could sit down and play Bejeweled for hours on end. I don't know why, but I it it's like you hear about people with Angry Birds. I I can get lost in games like that easily. <laughs> yeah. My parents did that, too. <laughs> they had, like, Angry Birds Rio, and they did a whole bunch. Which is how I got exposed to Angry Birds, and I'm like, there's, a, like, 30 Flash games that have this exact same concept. Yep. Yep. <laughs> a little better controls, too. I'm gonna point that one out. <laughs> Definitely sounds interesting. I'd give it a shot, but I don't have the device to do it right now. I don't. My mom has an Android. To... Yeah, Mr. I device. <laughs> uh, I only did it because I have iTunes. The only reason I did it. Honestly, I didn't even care to begin with the upgrade. But I did. But I got kind of talked into it, so. It hey. didn't happen. It, it's better to have a phone that actually can do something. Yeah. <laughs> I have gotten pissed at my phone so much it's pathetic. Because it would not want to work. Yeah. Of course, uh, it's also how I kept up with a, a GameStop. Or not GameStop, GameSpot. Um person we're having a couple first couple of articles from they had their uh pre pre-launch playstation 4 stream uh thursday hmm. and uh they were showing off the playroom that's on the playstation 4 which is uh, essentially a tech demo for it and the only good, uh, the only real not noticeable thing i saw was the controller check for it it makes it interesting it like zooms in on controller and it breaks down the controller as it looks at the different parts so it's like dual mon dual motors do check <laughs> it, it tries to make it sound epic as it's checking the controller for all the different functions as it does huh is it's a controller check 
what the hell else are you doing with it? <laughs> Outside of sucking in a whole bunch of robots into the controller itself, and having a, a rave party in your controller with the robots. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, I know you're not kidding. That's the bad thing. You've seen that? No, but I, I know the dumb ideas that get tossed out there. Yeah. Uh, anything else before we move on? Mm, nope. Alrighty then, moving on to some PlayStation 4 related news. Blockbuster refunds PS4 pre-order after megaphone protest. Which this one I found immensely funny. Yes, uh, Belgrade uh, UK retailer Blockbuster has refunded a customer £450, I believe. Is that the pound symbol? I think it is. Okay. Approximately $718 for his PlayStation 4 pre-order, only after he started protesting with a megaphone and place card outside of a local branch. Uh, the troubled uh, retailer, which last week entered administration for the second time this year, had originally offered uh, Alan Shelby £450 worth of Blu-rays, DVDs, and CDs instead of a cash refund, to BBC reports. A uh, 31-year-old... Uh, the 31-year-old began his protest outside of the store from 9 a.m. and was refunded the money half an hour later when the store opened. Blockbuster robbed me of 450 pounds for a PlayStation 4. I won't get it. Read his, uh, read his placard. His uh, placard. The great salt said, "As uh, be, I was the first customer in the store, and my refund was the first transaction, so I am very happy with that." In the right minds going to spend 450 pounds on Blu-rays and CDs a month before Christmas. It's unreasonable for them to expect me to do that when I was expecting a console. He added, and then statement my was explained that it was not store policy to give cash refunds for pre-orders, and that customers would need to write the company's main office. Uh. We can confirm that Blockbuster Entertainment LTD will be providing refunds for pre-orders, but local stores will be unable to fulfill such claims, said the company representative. Sony will launch PlayStation 4 yesterday, North America, and two weeks, and in two weeks in Europe. Yay. Okay, it seems like the guy kind of jumped gun. He, he took it straight to the local store, and apparently all he had to do was just write, ma write the headquarters, and they give the refund. Yeah, but, you know, that does not always work that easily. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, when you're trying to get money from a company, they're not cooperative. When they want your money for something, they will send that, they will send in the letters, because, um... You remember Hollywood Video, right? Yeah. You know how they're they no longer exist. Yeah. <coughs> I think la uh, it was last month we got a letter in the mail saying we still owed money for late fees. When they don't exist anymore. Yes. Seriously. From the people who bought Hollywood Video, so. That's a bunch of shit right there. Yeah. Granted, like, two of those are mine to begin with. But, yeah. They hound you for that. But, yeah. I wonder how Black Roster is doing over Europe, because it is, like, going, going, and almost gone here in America. There's one blockbuster left in the entire state of Tennessee. One. You may one. We still have one. Yes. <laughs> and it clo I think it, it's uh, starting its liquidation sale yesterday, I believe. Huh. And it's shutting down at the end of December. The one, uh, the old one, uh, down in town, that one's been closed up. Of course, they were selling the, uh, 
the little cards that they had behind the games that you could rent for like cents a pop. I don't know why, but they were. They were selling a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, why would who would buy this? Granted, I don't know. I don't know what you would do with it if you didn't sell it, but I guess somebody would want it. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess yeah. kudos to this guy for being persistent and getting his refund. Um, anything to say on that at all? Mm, no. Alrighty then, we shall move on! Do a random thing I found in the list, and I'm like, you know what? I'll throw this in because I don't know what this is. <laughs> uh, upcoming sci-fi FPS Neon Shadow launches next week. A new trailer released. Uh, the Neon Shadow upcoming first-person shooter from Tasty Poison and Crescent Moon. Those are some fantastic titles, uh, names for studios. Yeah, it is. Uh, trailer questions showed a very interesting uh, same device multiplayer mode for, on the iPad, which pitted players against one of the that are face to face by taking control of one half of the screen. It looks like it has the potential to be a really cool feature. Uh, Neon Shadow, uh, awesome shooter overall. Do, do, do. You are not helpful, article. You're so not helpful in informa just information about this. Uh, let's look at this trailer and actually try to find out what the hell this thing is. Sounds like a plan. It came out last Thursday. Hmm. It came out the 14th. Huh. You ready? Starting the trailer up in three, two, one, go. Y'all know how bad I want to scream Unreal Tournament right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Even the HUD. That's what. That was what threw me off like that. It's like the HUD. It's like, wait, wait. Nice for them to put in two seconds per wop wop of gameplay. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 I devise. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> hey, now, now I got something. Why do all the good ones come out on the iPhone first? <laughs> because the iPhone's where it's at, son. No, it's not. That's don't lie yeah. to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, yeah, the, uh, I say that when I know full well there's an overpriced as fuck Pokedex app on the on the iStore. <laughs> that that's just like don't lie to yourself. Yeah. No, don't no, seriously. An overpriced Pokedex app <laughs> that you have to pay for each region, and it's stupidly expensive for an app. Jeez. I got one for 99 cents and it does everything I need it to. Granted, the information's not all that up to date, but I can at least say I have a Pokedex app. Yeah. It looks nice, and it's from the guys who did Pocket, uh, Pocket RPG, which I don't know what is. I don't keep up with mobile gaming. I should, but I don't. It's kind of one of those things. <laughs> I know 
why did the device do that? And I still don't, because I'm like, I got an Avengers game. And that's it. Uh, the Avengers game isn't even that good. The game, by design, makes you play the single player through three times in order to beat the final boss and beat the, the big bosses. Really? Yes. Oh, by design. Because you'll, uh, you'll play through up until the first big boss. You will lose your first time, and you are sent back to grind. And then you work up to the next big boss. You're sent back the grind. Jeez. It's by design that it's that way. And it's stupid. The only reason I have that is because of Avengers Alliance. <laughs> so I can get some bonus stuff in Avengers Alliance if I complete certain things in the game. Ah. Which, Avengers Alliance is a far better design game. And it's on Facebook. Uh, anything to say about Neon Shadow? Mm, no. Alright, and then moving on to a quick one. Valve confirms no exclusive games for SteamOS. Yay, yeah, I guess. <laughs> In case you were worried, nope. <laughs> no exclusive games on Steam for SteamOS. You just I don't like know my. Who the fuck would be worried about you just like my yay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like who would be worried about this? Because I, because it's like I have to think it's like if it works for Steam OS, it works for fucking Steam. Yeah, it's kind of what I would think. The only things that are exclusive team are just exclusive PC games in general. Really? So, yeah. We're just gonna move on. Because I don't think anything else needs to be said about that. No. Title right. says it all right there. Yeah. Alright. Uh, next up, uh, a little bit of Arkham uh, Origins related news. A Rocksteady 6 game aiming for 2014. Um, I, I said this when I was streaming, um, Arkham Origins uh, for FN that it wasn't made by Rocksteady. It was made by Warner Brothers Montreal. Rocksteady has been working on something else. Apparently and something it's possibly... else has been there. It's coming in 2014. Uh... Possibly, it's possible it's a Possibly a sequel to Ark City, as clearly labeled by the title. The recently released Origins was a prequel. And uh, Kevin Conroy, the facto voice of Batman City, was working on an Arkham game, but not Origins. Or Origins Blackgate. So, what Arkham game is he working on? <laughs> Probably Rocksteady's. Uh, Rockstar teased Arkham World at VGAs, when many viewed a, what, which many viewed as a prank pulled by the Joker. However, Warner Brothers did register the Arkham Universe domain name, suggesting many more games to come in the Arkham franchise. <clears throat> which, with, uh, with, with two developers working on the franchise on long running years, appears Warner Brothers is well on the way to annualizing the franchise. Which I don't think necessarily would be a bad thing. At least not on Rocksteady, then, because... Well, that, think... that's kind of what I'm meaning there. It's not like Call of Duty, where they've got a new game every year, and it's by two teams that are so dried up, it's pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a I team mean, Rock... that's done good, and then a newer team working on it, too, so maybe something good will come out of it. Plus, I think Roxy turned out Arkham City in a two-year cycle, so... It was, like, two years after Ar uh, after Asylum City came out. So, it's they've been on. They just have someone in between to keep the series up. 
and I have I trust in Rocksteady because Arkham or Arkham Asylum and Arkham City were good. The not so good one of the series is Origins. Guess who made Origins? Not Rocksteady. <laughs> they just advised on the project. They advised on the story, and that was it. They let Warner Brothers Montreal do what they wanted, and we saw what they want, what they did. So, I trust in Rocksteady and turning out something good. And for all we know, Arkham World is probably the next title, because um, here's a little thing about Arkham Asylum. Arkham City is hinted at in Arkham Asylum. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And um the warden's office, you can see blueprint for Arkham City in his office. Huh. So a and there are in um there is a two unsolved plot lines at by the end of Arkham City. There's one with Azrael talking about how Gotham will burn eventually, and he is warning Batman of this. He, he doesn't say he's going to be responsible for this. He's warning Batman that uh, a danger is coming that will burn the city to the ground, I believe. And the next one is um, Hush. Um, Batman tries to back down Hush and ends up just in arm's reach of him. Before he gets away from him, which is an unsolved case. Hmm. So those two plot lines could be walking right into the next Arkham game. I wouldn't be surprised. Plus, Arkham City also expands the Batman family because Tim Drake's Robin is in there. I believe Dick Grayson is in. Dick Grayson is a part of the DLC as Nightwing. I wouldn't be surprised that the next Arkham game introduces whichever Batgirls in the Arkham franchise and keeps expanding the Batman family and playable characters too. So yeah. Anything else to say about that before we move on? Mm, no. Alrighty then. Next up, Mario Party Island Tour for 3DS. And apparently it looks like a Mario Party game. Well, I would kind of hope so. It sounds like it. I mean, Mario Party. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, on November 22nd, Island Tour will rock in the handhelds, and it sure looks like Mario Party. Island Tour will support four players via local download bay, and will include 80 new mini games. Any new mini games. New to the 3DS version is augmented reality with use AR cards for new games. Yay! Alright, let's look at this and see how Mario Party it looks. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Alright, starting up the 3, 2, 1, go. Everyone's in bubbles. And there is a need of some kind. I don't know. Okay. Wait, two dice? Yep, it looked a Mario Party game. Yeah. That. 
Nothing really stood out in me. Me neither. Man, another Mario Party title. Yay. Um, any, anything to say on that? Mm hmm no. Alright, and then, next up! Hold on. Someone forgot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Time to talk, Max Effect. At least it's not the game that shall not be mentioned. Mm. No! It's the next one. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Bioware for N7 Day, which is November 7th, because... Reason. Pun. <laughs> N7, November 7th. Yeah. Pun! Um, they released images of the next Mass Effect game. And by images, I mean, I don't know what the fuck's going on in these screenshots. I mean, you see that image on it, right? Yeah. That's one of them. Hmm. That's one. Um, you can click on the uh, 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 director Yannick Roy also tweeted an image and click on that one for another one. Um, I think there's a third one. a third one. I don't see one. But yeah, we got these two images to go off of. So, absolutely nothing to go off of. Yep! Yeah, I didn't even dedicate a video to this, speculating on these three, these three images. Like, a couple, like uh, no, wait, it was four images. Two of them were back, two of them were like scenery shots, which doesn't help. At all. You could, no... The second image is like, up oh, it's a dude, and you can see some gauntlets for, like, I'm guessing, like, underslung guns, maybe? Or something? I don't know. And then you got this one, which, if you could tell me what's truly going on in this, besides some guy standing at a console, props to you, because I got nothing. All I can tell you is it's some dude standing on a con standing next to a console of some kind. And what I assume is a cutscene. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It doesn't help that you have a glare from the window going onto the screen to really obscure it. Hmm. There's just... <sighs> I can understand there being speculation on this because, hey, it's Mass Effect. There is just nothing in these images. Bioware is just teasing the fuck out of everybody. Well, this it kind of can't be Shepard. We know that much, right? Yeah, it's confirmed that there's no Shep in there. I wonder why! <laughs> And I think it's a prequel, but where the fuck do you go after three? You go to hell after so, three. That's how I understand it. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, didn't play the whole franchise there, but that that ending. Mm -hmm. No. So, yeah, there's, there's nothing there to really hit. It, these, it's cool that tweeting out some screenshots and some shots just to be like, hey, we're working on the game, but don't expect to get anything worth value out of this. Call it, we're gonna get something of value like five months now from, from now. Probably at like E3 when they first debut it. Probably. This is probably gonna, we're probably gonna get the EA press conference and be like, oh, by the way, new Mass Effect game! And they walk off. 
and then we see a trailer for it. Yeah, they'd probably want to walk off before that, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think they're pissing everyone off more and more. Yeah, especially if it's, like, something really dumb. It's just going to be like, boo, boo. Somebody brought tomatoes to the <laughs> Uh, all joking aside, though. It's there. I'm ready to move on. All right. Sounds like a plan to me. I'm ready to move on. All right. On. Next up, we have some sales news in terms of Disney Infinity because I've kind of want to keep up. I've kind of wanted to keep up with this stuff just to see uh, how it all plays out. And I did not hop in on Skylander Swap Force because I realized, fuck, that's a lot of money to put into this. And I already have some expensive hobbies of mine. Oh mm. no. Uh, Alright, uh, but more than 1 million Disney Infinity starter packs have been sold since the game launched in August. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Eager said last night during an earnings call, Parks packs are sold for $75 each. In addition, Eager said individual Disney Infinity toys are selling extremely well. Nice that we don't have numbers on that. But the most popular figure is selling out at many retailers in a matter of days. All indications suggest the strong demand for Disney Infinity will continue. Um, here's the here's the really uh, interesting thing. Uh, Disney Infinity helped uh, Disney's gaming unit, Disney Interactive, swing to a profit from their fourth quarter in in, uh, in its September 28th. Revenues from uh, from the quarter rose 205 million to 300 to 396 million. And with profit improving from a loss of seventy six million to income of sixteen million. Jeez. The company was losing money until Disney Infinity and they're like, Oh, now we're making money. Well, you know now why? It's because they wanted to invest all their time and money into that club penguin. And tell me Is how Disney many Infinity? Well not Disney Infinity, Disney Interactive. Y yeah. Any of the Disney games are included with that. I had no clue. <laughs> I didn't know clue. I've seen commercials for Call of Penguin. I didn't know it was Disney Interactive behind it, though. If I'm not mistaken, it is. But, uh, well, you got that, and then on top of that, every movie they do, they've got a game for it. How many yeah. times does people have to say... Movie to game transitions just don't work. <laughs> uh, look at the recent or move or game because apparently that shit the bucket. <sighs> uh. But that's just this is like wow this this game may have saved this company. That's like okay you're losing seventy six million dollars and all of a sudden you're making sixteen million. Okay. Off one game. O okay. But, Disney just bought LucasArts. Mm -hmm. So that means so that, that more than likely all future Star Wars games will probably be done by Disney Interactive with the Lucas people. Yeah, because LucasArts is closed down. And I, I think they've pretty much merged everyone. So, I believe. you gotta sit back and think. Really, if they did lose that much money, that would not kill them for the next year or so. They they could make that up and then some. Just toss another Star Wars game out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. For the year also ended uh, September 28th, interactive revenues rose 26% to $1.1 billion. And operating results rose uh, 129 million to a loss of 87 million. And proof results were attributed to increase in Disney console games and Japanese mobile business. Overall, Disney posted revenue 11.57 billion for the quarter, up 7 percent, and 45.05 billion for the year, and also 7 percent. Also up 7 percent of the more numbers. Uh, Disney also announced that Star Wars Episode Eight will be released in theaters on December 18th, 2015, which coincidentally is also the same day of the Warcraft film. 
Yeah. Maybe. I'm sorry. I feel bad for the Warcraft film. Hmm. I, I, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to point this one out. World of Warcraft is big. Star Wars is bigger. <laughs> that Warcraft film is going to take a hit. Just because it's being released with not just within a within a week of the next Star Wars film, but on the same damn day. Yeah, that's something that they need to sit back and think. Uh, if we release this on this day, we will not get a bit of profit. No, you're competing with Star Wars. Granted, Star Wars movies. Trust wise has taken a hit the prequels, but still. Still, it's got Star Wars on it. There's enough people that will go and watch it, whether it's the worst movie out there or it's the best thing going. <laughs> yeah. Just ask out of three. <laughs> Hell, I saw episode three enters. Now granted. I don't eat the prequels. Some people hate the prequels. Hate them with a passion. And would love to see those movies burn. I'm not one of those people. I agree and I can see why people hate these movies. But I don't truly have a problem with them. I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd I sit down and watch them and kind of enjoy them. But I'll still like the original trilogy more than the prequels. Oh yeah, even the article says, by the way, uh, it's on the same day. And uh, episode 7 is being directed by J.J. Abrams, so, lens flare! Although apparently the new Star Trek movie didn't have that much lens flare. <laughs> so he, he may be reeling that back a bit. Although I did find out something interesting about the two, Star two new Star Trek films. I don't know if I told you this about I told you about this or not. Um, R2-D2's in both. Really? Yes. He is, like, a very small and minuscule. Oh, yeah, you showed me those. Yeah. R2-D2's in both of the new Star Trek homes. Kind of just as floating debris. Kind of just floats through space in a couple, in a shot or two in the, in the new movies, but he's there, so... Now J.J. Abrams has to put R2-D2 actually up in front, up in the foreground for once. I assume. Granted, we don't know what Hell 8's gonna be about. Although, let's see. Um, we've covered like 40 years of Star Wars content since the end of the original trilogy with the expanded universe, so... They could adapt something from there, or write their own stuff, because why not? Yeah, that's a... If, I'm not kidding, like... There are major events that have happened in the expanded universe. I, I don't know if you want me to say what one of them is. Uh, I don't know. Spoilerish or no? Um, yeah. Then probably not. Okay, because it involves a major character of the original trilogy. Yeah, probably not then. All right. So, anything else to say about Infinity's profits and being the best thing to happen at Disney Interactive in a long time? Mm, no. All right, then moving on, we're going to cover, uh, cover a couple of things that came out of uh, BlizzCon that happened recently. I didn't know BlizzCon recently happened, but I don't follow Blizzard stuff. I don't much. really either. Oh, I'm like, oh yeah, BlizzardCon. And, well, folks, there's new World of Warcraft expansion. Yes, they're still coming out with expansions for that.
Alright. Is Warlords of Draenor. Dra Draenor? 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 Draenor. I'm gonna go with Draenor. Let's see. Confirms next expansion for MMO. Raises level cap to 100. Adds new character models. Alright. Uh, following a publication of the story, Blizzard Interactive confirmed more like the next expansion of the World of Warcraft. Uh, let's see. Explore Savage World. Uh, explore the hostile world of Draenor, home of the Orc and Draenei races, as it exists. Existed in that once existed in the venture in all new zones alongside characters central to Warcraft history. Uh, customizable stronghold under Noor and gather NPC followers to collect resources and embark on missions on your orders. Uh, is the upgrade to level 90? So you can skip all that boring level grinding and go straight to the new content. Uh, new player character art, character models, and animations from many of World of Warcraft's existing playable races are being fully revamped in keeping with the game's iconically epic style. And a bit dated, mind you. <laughs> uh, level cap is up to 100. And more! Uh, drain eye rates, scenarios, battlegrounds, challenge modes, and more. No matter what kind of content you enjoy and wait. Yay! We'll play the trailer and see what this looks like. Alright. If I, I sound a bit disinterested, it's because I'm not that into WoW. I have played WoW. And I stopped. Well, Twice. <laughs> so. Damn it, ad. Yeah. We are the VSA. That Shadowfall ad. Yep. Which apparently wasn't that good. Uh, apparently it's getting mixed reviews. Alright, ready? Hold on. Only ad? Yep. Now I'm ready. Alrighty then, we shall look at the trailer for the new WoW expansion in 3, 2, 1, go. Let's say, why do I not hear audio? Oh, bug with the muting. Oh, really? Yeah. I had to oh. click it twice, and then it, it, <laughs> then it was happy, it was more than happy to play it with glasses with my headphones with the thing it was doing. War. It is the lifeblood of this world. No, so never changes. Oh, okay. It's I will not. <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> he asked who. Uh, not uh, it. I, <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm not interested in WoW, because this doesn't excite me. The next thing they announced at BlizzCon, I'm like, you know what? This sounds crazy enough that I'm in. But but this, I'm just like, new expansion for WoW. Yay. Yay for those who play WoW these days. Eh. I'm, I'm not into that. I'm not either, really. Yeah, but this next one, I'm like, you know what? I might, I will try this because, well, the cinematic trailer alone got kind of got me into it. Kind of, kind of, because it kind of sold the idea of it's like, yep, all these characters. But you want to move on to the next one? Yep, let's move on to Hot. <laughs> I think he can Sin. legitimately be called that now. <laughs> yes, Hero of the Storm. The second thing that second big thing to come out of BlizzCon. Um, pretty much, it's Blizzard's it's Blizzard's uh, uh, MOBA or Blizzard's Dota MOBA, whatever acronym for gameplay you want to use. Yeah, but this is it. Um, pretty much, you know all those characters that are are under Blizzard, like Diablo. The guys from StarCraft and the, those important characters from World of Warcraft that you never hear about. You know, those guys, you get to play as them and a MOBA. Yes, it sounds about as insane as it... Well, it looks about as insane as it sounds. But just look at that screenshot for the cinematic trailer. I kind of hit the play on both of them. Cause oh. I, I queued them both up. <laughs> it's a Space Marine facing down Diablo. From Diablo. Uh, they're just like, you know what, I'm in on this. Because this sounds Miss crazy and stupid enough to work. Showed Moscow what they are made of when they lounge poolside in Moscow. But I'd say we look at that first before we look at anything else. Um, Hold on, I got anything. something wanting to play. I don't know what, but I got something wanting to play. That could be that ad. Ad plan? Has to be. Because I don't see anything else wanting to do. Gotta love those random hidden ads that just auto play. Especially when you just hear the noise coming from out of nowhere, and it's just like, where is this coming from? Why is this playing? What's going on? I don't understand. Damn it. Just looking. Fucking things not cooperating. Eh. Oh, load do, do already, to... please. Uh, do you want me to tell you the thing about the uh, preview for Game Seven episode? About a certain thing about the episodes. Sure. It continues the trend. The eighty-six contestants of the sixty-second Miss Universe. I was right. It was an ad. Fucking oh. ad. But yeah, <laughs> it, it can, uh, episode 7 continues the trend of Gaim. Oh. Huh. And it's the it's the big one. The the big one. Yeah. I, I'm being vague on purpose. <laughs> so we're starting the cinematic trailer first. I figured, let's get the the really good Blizzard uh, CG that they love to do out of the way first before we actually look at what the heck the game's going to possibly look like. Because, you know, th if the thing has commercials, this is all it's going to be commercial-wise. Because that's all Diablo 3 was commercial-wise, was all the cinematics. 
True. Because, damn it, Blizzard loved their cinematics, and you know what? They just make an animated movie at this point. Damn it, I cannot get it to load off of that page at all. You just go through YouTube and get watch it from there. What the hell? What the fucking hell? Flash ain't crashing. YouTube just don't want to give me the video because one of these freaking articles will not finish loading. God. Try this again. I think I know which... I think you know which one. Oh, I was about to say it's the next one. No. But it's not. Now are you going to work right? Man, what the fuck? All right, we've had enough problems since Damn yesterday. Damn it, Google. Get your shit straight. Damn it, Google. What the hell? Okay. Plan B. I will get this fucking video to load. <laughs> It's not flash this time. It's just computers being stupid. For some reason, and I don't know why. Finally got the, uh, service engine soon light off my car. Well, let's so talk about something while we're... While you're trying to get working. Um, uh, we got the sensor to check it. Apparently, all we had to do was erase the error it was doing from, uh, the gas cap being off. And it fixed it. Hmm. Hopefully. I wonder what in the hell's going on with that now. And now I'm going to random gaming websites to see if there's any breaking news. But considering it's Saturday, that ain't happening. Sunday, nothing happened. Nothing. IGN doesn't even post on Sundays. I swear. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I, the game shows I don't think he uh, posts on Sundays either. So it is slow day. So it's either a slow day or just no one. I just, just everyone decides we're just gonna post it on Monday. Save my thoughts. The reason why. Oh. Stupid me should... decides to try something different when I set this computer up, and I think, no, I you motherfucker. <laughs> I keep getting the same error, like it's not able to read the video. That's odd. Oh, now I can actually get to the answer for it. Try again after thirty minutes. Fuck that shit.
Um. <laughs> Video's working for you, right? Uh, yep. Okay. Just making sure. Hell, I've even got a YouTube, play, YouTube video playing in the background like I normally do for music. Damn it, I cannot remember how to turn JavaScript on on freaking Firefox. Damn it. Never avoid the technical difficulties. <laughs> I know you saw what I just did there. Yes, I did. <laughs> technical difficulties. Please stand by. God, you motherfucker. All right. You know what? You know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. You know, I was telling you about the the, the website to make your own buttons. I've come across recently because of a stream. You know what I need to do? I need to find a clip of the shooting strike sound effect with explosions for you to play when you pull that technical difficulty sign up. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you can just be like, technical difficulties, please stand by. Then all you hear is explosions. Now, would you care to cooperate in this browser? Fuck you. <laughs> it's fucking Firefox. <laughs> ah. God damn it, and I just installed Firefox. What the hell? Okay. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, let's do this. Alright. Started to play, so I know it's freaking working in this one. Alright, let's look at the Heart of the Storm cinematic trailer in 3, 2, 1, go. I think the problem's gonna be is if we try to play the second trailer. No, it'll work in this browser. I can almost guarantee that one. I just don't know why it wasn't working in Firefox. It's Firefox being filmed. Firefox just said no, I will not play it. There's only one guy in this trailer. There's no World of Warcraft hero. Kurt. 
got two Starcraft heroes and the Diablo heroes. We've got one of each of the major IPs from Blizzard in terms of villains. But, but no, no World of Warcraft hero, come on. Like I said, the, that trailer just seems like, ah, oh, we're just going to throw these heroes together. No real backstory, just the place, this is a place where just heroes come together to battle over stuff. <laughs> you don't need any more backstory for this bull. No. It's a crossover. Everyone, everyone's just, just crossing over into this one place to have some fun. And to beat the shit out of each other. With nukes. And because, bullets. because nukes are everything. Yes, especially for Call of Duty. Yes. Well, no, I thought Call of Duty it was dogs. N nukes too. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, you, you could end a couple matches early with if you got a high enough uh, kill streak, and you you just nuke the whole battlefield. <laughs> you know. It, it it's times like that where they need a saying in the game where it's like you're too damn good, quit playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was like twenty plus kills in order to get that kill streak. And I bet it's without dying. Yeah. Yeah. One of those easier said than done. Yeah. And like I said, it's one of those moments where if you know someone that's got that, you need to just tell them, look, you're that good, just quit playing. Yeah, go pro, <laughs> son. Go pro. <laughs> right. What do you think of the cinematic trailer? I, I'm going to be a little cynical here. I have a feeling the game's going to look nothing like that. Do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's not like not even remotely close. Of... Yeah. It's, it's not like Blizzard has this reputation of beautifully done CGI, uh, CG cutscenes for games that are nowhere near that style. Look at World of Warcraft. I mean... <laughs> uh, look at that. Look at Diablo. Look at Starcraft. It, it's uh, their, it's their, it's what they do. Beautiful but they CGI did it cut good. Scenes. Yeah, the beautiful CG cutscenes with game to show off a game that you really don't see those models like that. You really don't get to see Diablo like he is in that cinematic trailer in Diablo Three, I believe. You, know, you don't get that same look. You don't get to see the Lich King in game like he is in the cutscenes. That was the dude with the the ice sword. Hmm. But yeah, let, let's look at the gameplay and see how this game actually looks. <laughs> I'm sure it totally doesn't look like League a little bit. No, probably not at all. I mean... <laughs> granted, gr granted, defense of the agents is where the hell this one, this entire gameplay come from, and that was Blizzard. So, yeah, but Riot did so much better with it. <laughs> All right, Riot took that, and made millions. Riot turned it into an, a official sport. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> Dota created it. Uh. League made it a household name. Anyway. 
Ready? Yep. Starting up in three, two, one, go. See, I told you it'd work. I don't know why it hates Firefox. Who knows? I'm just happy it's not crashing every time the load a page will flash. Yeah. So I'm taking it as you're destroying the statue. Yeah. And that's the tower. Yeah. And a... a... gay. Gay? A gay? Towers? Epic Blizzard Heroes. Now that would be a neat twist, having gay. Yeah. Flames and jungling. <laughs> yeah. Big battlegrounds. Hell! What? Huh. Uh, what? Wait, did she just... She went under the map. Like, officially. You, you saw that too, right? I think so. God, uh, that it's just, it's just like oh, uh, oh, uh, all the, all those times with Blitzcrank. No, no, no. I don't want to remember those. I think it's one of those that does look like League, but it looks different enough. Yeah. It it and, would be one of those I would be willing to try it. And it also seemed like it had a environment properties. Yeah. And it's like, oh, here's this ghost ship that apparently you can have shoot at specific locations, I guess, if you control it. Or a second level of a map that is that you can battle around and, and possibly get to like shortcuts to areas. So now you have, like, this, uh, secondary opportunity to gank. I, you know what? I didn't, I'd try it. Granted, I won't know half these fucking characters. But, hell, I'll try it. Eh, when it gets down to it, Riot could screw around with all the champions, uh, backstories. And I could guarantee it to you, most of the people playing would not realize it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people who like to at least read the backstories just to be like, oh, hey, that's cool. Just so, so I can at least I know will, the character a little better, but... I, I will on champions that I like. Yeah. But as far as just sitting there looking through all of them, no. No. Most people don't give a shit about the backstories. Or the story in general of League, because there is a, there there is a list of, at least a story there kind of. That's what that that's how Aram came about. That's a, 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 Aram is a has a bit of a story to it. Granted, not that many people care, but they at least try to put it in there. They try to, but it don't ever get response like it should. Yeah. Uh, anything else to say about uh, Heroes of the Storm? Mm, no. Alright, and then we shall move on to what I was going to have originally linked as the GameStop article, but apparently that one broke. So we're looking off this form post that sources back to the GameStop article. So in a roundabout way, we're looking at that one. Um, it essentially just breaks down to apparently a blacklist is underperformed, and we actually have numbers, so we can actually say yes, it is underperforming. Unlike Tomb Raider, which was a vague, oh, it's not up to our expected numbers. Hmm. Um, no, this came short of making their budget. 
Uh, but uh, uh, Blacklist sold around two million copies to date and published in the, pub the publisher announced today during a financial call discussing results from the latest period where the French company posted a loss of 83 million. So, yeah, it did underperform because they lost money. Yeah. So it's not this vague bulge about the game. No, they they lost money on the project. Also, in your call, it was real Rayman Legends has sold close to 1 million units so far. The game was also confirmed for a release on, on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in February. Uh, both Blacklist and Legends failed to meet initial sales targets, Ubisoft said last month, though it's not clear if, there, if that remains the case. Ubisoft management also said during the call today that the company expects combined Xbox One and PlayStation and PlayStation shipments to reach 10 million units during launch period. This is the same figure that Electronic Arts is holding too. Lastly, Ubisoft said uh, South Park to Stick of Truth was recently, which was recently made in March 2014, is expected to sell 1 to 2 million units. So while they're saying, hey, these underperformed, that may not be the case right now because they're working off the, the numbers that just came in. Right. But at least they're upfront on the numbers. It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> this it didn't underperform because it, it didn't meet our lofty goals. It, no, it underperformed because it didn't make money. You know, like we kind of need stuff to do. That it's more than you can say for uh, the eighty-six what was contestants it, like four or five of the sixty-second we Tomb Raider Tomb Raider being universe pageant under, uh, showed underperforming, most... and we didn't even have sell. Uh, we had sales numbers, but we didn't have budget numbers. Right. To compare to. But, yeah. Um, anything to say about this? No. Alrighty, then. Moving on to Fall Out for Maybe. 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 Um, looking at this update real quick. Oh. Apparently, it's looking like this is possibly a hoax. Oh, well, we'll at least talk about this real quick. Apparently, um, a website called Survivor 2299 pointed to a VGA reveal next month. Apparently, um, coming from Bethesda about uh, Fallout 4. I'm going to quickly scan through some of this. Uh... Two, three p.m. Now it is. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it's talking about. But apparently, this is possibly a hoax. So, yeah, that, that's is about a waste of an article. Well, when did update come in? Because I I didn't think it had an update on this. I don't Back when I honestly know. But, yeah, um, do you have anything to say about this? Because <laughs> we just pretty much tossed this one out. Mm, not really. Oh, that, that, was a, that, that was a waste of, like, three minutes. Yeah, but oh well. Yeah. All right, now on to the one that I heard about, and when I looked it up, it changed my opinion of a company. Um, for those of you who don't know the basis of this, um, Rare, that lovable little company from back in the, end of the 64 days who made, you know, Banjo Kazooie and all those fun titles back in the, end of the 64 days, were bought by Microsoft. Uh, like what? Were they bought by Microsoft? I don't remember. Like, oh, really? But they were bought by Microsoft and. Since then, they haven't made that many great titles. Well, what we have here 
is a list of cancel of confirmed cancel titles from Rare. Now we we know uh, right now uh, Rare's making the Connect Sports tiles mainly. You know they made a Banjo Kazooie game like four years ago, I believe, four or yeah. five years ago. Yeah, and it, it did not go over well. Yeah, but just looking down this list, and it's just like. Wow. Wow. Uh, just to quickly go to quickly read off some of these. Ordinary Joe, a uh, canceled prototype for a new survival horror game. Uh, it was early development for a 360 at Rare, designed by Chris uh, Seaver. Archangel, a futuristic racing game prototype that was developed in 2003 for the Xbox. Uh, again, Saver. Uh, Perfect Dark Core, a sequel to Perfect Dark. Uh, uh, management decided to hand the Perfect Dark franchise to the developer Conquer, to the developers of Conquer, a team by Chris Saver. Again, Perfect Dark Core featured a more realistic atmosphere than its predecessors, which were having a different and less feminine bravado behavior, smoking and flirting. A sequel to Cameo, I believe one of the one of the launch titles for the 360. I don't know yeah. how well that went over. But yeah, a, a sequel to Cameo. Cancel 360 title. Development at British Studio Rare LT. At, at the British Studio Rare. It was never officially announced. Some Cameo 2 animations appear in a reel of a former Rare employee. Ad noticed by some Cameo fans at NeoGAF Forums. Cascade. An unreleased fantasy MMO in production at Rare the project staffed started after Perfect Dark Zero by Mark Edmonds and Chris uh, Hilston. It built up early work from a post uh, Perfect Dark 64 prototype called Quest. Banjo Karting, a uh, prototype for 360 just before Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was finished in late 2008. The prototype took advantage of classic Banjo Kazooie characters and built upon the racing parts of Nuts and Bolts. Which looking at that may not have went over too well so that could be part of the reason why it got canned yeah urchin action fantasy horror game was in development uh for the 360 a few pieces of concept are revealed by rare artist uh ryan uh Berka who Berka who that might be totally wrong at the nordic game conference held in uh Almo in Sweden in, two thousand, in May 2008. While these are scarce, it's known that Ur Urchin was in development by the team the team that was responsible for Conquer Live and Reloaded. Um, Sabermen Stay Paid, uh, developed by a team which uh, worked on Star Fox Adventures or Jet Force Gemini. Uh, Sabermen Stay Paid has evolved from a racer into a full adventure. Now, okay. That statement right there sounds like it could actually be worth something. At at the core, Star Fox Adventures, I thought was a good game. I just did not feel like it fit into the Star Fox category. But then you take it to a, what I assume is a full-on like adventure title with brand new property. and It sounds like it could have done something. Let's see. Soul Catcher, cancelled game for the 360 project was meant to be a prototype for a fantasy action adventure in first person view that used the Xbox Vision camera and a customized proto wand for most controls to attack and do magics. Huh. Wow. They they were doing they were doing wow. They were managing to want to pull off something that the Kinect can now do before the Kinect was available. No, they were going they were shooting for Wii. They were shooting for Wii stuff on the 360. That when I uh, when I hear customized proto wand for motion controls, I immediately think Wii because that's what the Wii does. And the that move, or even but, the move. Yeah, but the the move is straight. The move would be more of a it. the move would be more of a better comparison for the simple fact of the camera being implemented too. Yeah. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie, the original Xbox, 
uh, players were able to construct their carts on, out of different parts. Therefore, after it was canceled, the concept of it may have evolved. It may have, uh, have evolved into Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts. I still say that concept is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Give give us another Banjo Kazooie game like when they first started. Seriously. The Vano, one of the various prototypes in development at Rare during 2006-2007. Uh, project remained in prototype stage and was not greenlit. Only few elements were set in stone, but it could have been some sort of nature simulator more like more than a real... Nature simulator more than a realistic Viva Piñata. So... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Fast and Furious, a uh, cancelled party game that was developed in 2006 by Rare for the 360... Uh, Xbox Live Arcade digital service. Other than the name, normal joypad, the game could also have played with the Xbox Live Vision camera to track player movements. In a similar way, the PS2i toy or Microsoft's own Kinect, uh, the Fast and Furious included many different uh, mini games as 100 Meter Dash, uh, Bungie Run, uh, Hurdles, and Tip Tup Curling. So, again, they were working on Mushroom Trust before the, before the Kinect came into play. And finally, Quest canceled MMO game that was developed that was in development uh, at Rare. Uh, these are the most documented canceled titles through foreign employees, Twitter accounts, and interviews. We also know about a few games that were just known by their initials. BR, BW, K2, CD2, SD, and SU. We're talking almost 20 canceled titles out of this company. Jeez. Half of these sound like decent ideas. And more than what we've gotten out of them. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, wow. R Rare's been screwed. And do you notice they're through former employees? Yeah. So apparently a lot of them got pissed off and said, you know what? Screw it. I mean, almost makes you wish that Rare could get back on their feet and just do something on their own again. Yeah, it makes you wonder, it makes you go, it's like, why was it Rare bought by Nintendo? Because Nintendo treated them right. Yeah. I I come back to that urchin one. That urchin one on concept. Uh, some of that concept art looks good. Well, Quest. As big as MMOs are, they could have done something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Cascade. Cascade looks good. Some of these ideas that they were doing stuff that the Kinect can now do. It's like, what the heck? You tell them no, and then you turn around and tell them to do something with this. They already had something with it, and you said no. <laughs> it's like, they were working with Kinect. They were like, oh, let's do this with Kinect. Let's do this with most controls. And it's like, no. They were working pre-Kinect and making it function, apparently. Uh, and yet, you can click on the the little highlight art uh, links to get actually more stuff. There's more stuff beyond that mm. for some of these. Because they got like full animations working for uh, there, there's some animation stuff in there for uh, Perfect Dark Core. Uh, same with Cameo too. Uh, oh, character animation video for Cascade. I'm just like, I just, wow, this changes my whole opinion of Rare. Because I'm like, Rare, why don't you do anything good? And now I'm like, Rare, I feel so sorry for you. I feel bad for you guys. Because you just, what? Well, you know, Microsoft kind of gave them the shaft, too. Yeah, that's why I said, Rare got screwed. 
Because, I mean, okay, I'll give Microsoft credit on kind of putting a halt on two of them. But if they still let them go with nuts and bolts, then why didn't they let them try the other two first? (laughs) Correct? Yeah. But, uh, uh, so many of them in here. Like, yeah, just, uh, like, it's, like, what, why does this not exist? Why can't we have this thing? Um, and just a couple notes on those initials. Uh, BW was realistic, or at least uh, future realistic, and CE2 was possibly cracked down too. But yeah, just the thought of, like, that first one of, like, Rare doing a survival horror title. Just just think about that. Rare does a survival horror title. <laughs> I wonder how good that would be. The world will never know. Ah, uh, I, I feel I feel bad for Rare now. Because I feel I, I felt like it's like ah oh, rare you don't do anything good anymore and it's like well now I know why because they've been just like well we're not gonna tell you what to do but we're not but we're gonna cancel anything that we don't agree with apparently yeah and that ain't right no because some of these don't sound like too terrible of ideas. Just mm. wow! I'm so happy I actually watched the video that that kind of made me aware of this. Because now I now I'm like I, now I feel like I'm better informed about Rare's current situation. But uh, we, we want to get off the the depressing stuff. Yeah. The, the, let's move on. All right. Yeah, you know how before I said that a quarter of our news would be uh, PlayStation Four related. Yeah, that's yeah. not really the case because we really didn't have that much announced or talked about outside of you know the it, the PlayStation Four launched, and since neither one of us have the the PlayStation Four itself, we can't really talk about that except for what we've seen. And I'll be honest, the stream-wise, it didn't look that good. No. I mean, you could pull up the image I uh, I uh, uploaded on the server. I would have to download it again. It didn't take, like, three seconds. Dang. Okay. Gotta get it sized, but... Yeah, the the picture Tommy's pulling up was, uh... Uh, from when I was watching Screw Attack's stream of the PlayStation 4. And what you're seeing is, well, what it looks like to stream through, through the PlayStation 4. And it looks... Boring color wise. Yeah. You have gray, gray, and white. And more gray. That's. That's. What? Gray, gray, and white is your colors? Ugh. It's like the most boring color combination I've seen. Well, gray's the new black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But also, you see, you got, like, two lines of the chat 
you can see. Yay. Yeah. And you got a, a viewer count and a message count. I don't know why the fuck you have a message count. I don't either. It's pointless. Um, there's your face camera from the place from the PlayStation Eye. You see how tiny that thing is. Yeah, I mean, could they not have at least made it the width of what wasn't being filled in? Yeah. And then you have the game itself, which that's Assassin's Creed 4. As it says up top. But, ugh. Ugh, I don't like it. Well, you know, at least it's going to be better than Microsoft. <laughs> Seeing as how with the Xbox One, you won't even be able to share anything you you uh, record outside of Xbox Live. Which makes it entirely pointless. pointless. Mm -hmm. Pointless! Yep. Pointless! We're gonna give you a fancy toy and you can't use it. You can't use it to its full capabilities. Uh, but yeah. I mean, otherwise the games look good, but what the f do you expect? Oh, also, um, you can't stream the menus. Um, the stream kicks off anytime you try to change games. And I guess only the PlayStation Eye mic works right now. I don't know whether the headset mic works in terms of the streaming, because they tried to get it to work and it didn't. Oh, God. And yes, that thing echoes. And it's not just like it echoes with your TV. It echoes with you. Your voice echoes. Like you're standing oh, in an empty hallway. And it sounds terrible. Terrible. You know, I will say, it's great if you just want to stream your games and you don't care about the quality. But if you want quality streams, it's going to be people who invested into it. And have, you know... PBR or a capture card or a decent mic at least. <laughs> uh, you know, and I know we've done touch on the Steam OS, but you know, sitting here thinking about it just now. I wonder if Valve's going to get any wise ideas on trying to allow their Steam machines to stream. Oh, I'm sure they will since the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One do it. <laughs> yeah, but like, the Wii oh, U doesn't. That's just because the Wii U doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, Hell, people are saying the next gen the starts now and the Wii U's been out for, what, a year? Yeah. And, and technically, then... that's a next gen console. But in all honesty, I kind of agree with that statement. We saw the specs. The Wii U does not stand anywhere close. Yeah. I mean, it, it does seem kind of unfair to compare it with the PS4 and the Xbox One. Yeah. So I, I guess I can kind of see that statement there, but in the same sense I see your point. I mean, it kind of goes back to, it was like, well, was the, was the Wii, do you count the Wii as the part of the previous generation? Because I'm sure spec-wise it doesn't match up to the 360 or the PS3, but it's a part of that generation of consoles. It's like ignoring the engage existed for its generation of portable devices just because it, uh, the games on there look like shit. It still existed. It's still a part of history. Yes, I remember the engage. Well, you know, I guess you could 
considered the Wii U as a cross gen. Yeah, that's because a... because in a sense, look at how many people turned away from the Wii simply because of the nunchucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's real hardcore focus on casual yeah. gamers. Yeah, which is an odd statement to say, but it's the best way to describe it. Well, and, oh, yeah. you, and you also gotta look at how many Wii nunchucks have went through TVs. <laughs> I, don't, I swear I don't that was the... hearing that many. I thought it was like two or three people who were stupid enough to did that. I, I swear that was probably the funniest thing out of all the Wii stuff. <laughs> Hear about some person not paying attention to the fact that the nunchucks are not attached to your hand. They can go flying. Yeah. <laughs> but we oh, lost yeah. track of the topic, by the way. Yeah. Uh, in terms of PlayStation 4 news, we've got three things to cover real quick. Um, I don't even know if you want to play the videos because yeah, I can't tell you shit about the Uncharted video because the person that's doing the voiceover, I don't recognize, even though I've played the Uncharted series, so I assume it's a new character. We Whatever might, they're rep We might play the video on the next article, but this one, nah. Yeah, and whatever historical stuff it's referencing in the map, I won't know because I I don't know that much world history stuff, especially when it comes to archaeological or uh, navigation and exploring stuff. So it's going to be lost on me unless I might be able to pick it up on it, but I still haven't watched IGN's uh, Rewind Theater on that. I can explain what's going on in the trailer for the third one pretty easily because... Um, Technically, that story already exists. It's just being adapted into DLC. But yeah, the first article, um, just announcing, hey, and turns coming to the PlayStation 4. Um, no surprise there. As big as Uncharted 3 is, yeah, that's not a surprise. No. Uh... Not much details right now. Yeah, um, if you pick through this trailer, you'll get you'll pick up clues. IGN's got their rewind the other up. I'm sure they've picked apart this trailer and they've picked up on all the clues and they have a better explanation for what it is. I have not gotten a chance to look at that. Oh so, yeah. So don't say. All I know is I'm assuming that whoever is the main villain of this game is someone from Nathan's past who he possibly screwed over or ended up in a bad deal with or something along those lines. That's the only thing I can speculate on based off his dialogue. Hmm. But that's all I have to say. Anything else to say? No. All right. Next up, Disney Disney beta available first on PlayStation. Um, pretty much, uh, it's coming out on the PlayStation 4, for, uh, this name beta will be available first on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3 to reserve your seat, pre-order the game at select retailers. That's it. And which, then we... Which trailer is that one? Is I'm going there? to look real quick. There is no volume control on this, so I hope it doesn't die out of shit. There is two volume control. Oh, no, there isn't, I guess. No, there's mute and loud. Oh. Um, it's something new, I'll tell you that much, because I don't recognize any of this. Okay. Nope. I just walk through it, I see these robotic, robotic, big old headdress looking, big old head looking, looking robots, and I'm like, I don't recognize this, this is new. Then, let's play it. Alright, starting up the Destiny PS4 beta trailer thingy in 3, 2, 1, go.
Now this is all in the From all of us at Bungie, we'd like to congratulate Sony on an amazing launch of the PlayStation 4. And to everyone out there in the PlayStation Nation, we can't wait to see you online playing Destiny in 2014. Am I right? Yeah! See, they uh, dug into the stock music library. <laughs> that uh, buh sound that's in freaking everything. Yeah. I swear that has to be a stock music file. By now, yeah. I, uh, I like the way we got a lot more gameplay out of that one. Yeah, we're, we're getting more and more of Destiny as the days go by I bet the beta is getting really close because that there was a lot more gameplay in that yeah <laughs> we also saw a little bit more of the moon that we've been seeing recently and other stuff but yeah anything else to say about the beta Announcement? No. All right, then. Moving on. We have The Last of Us Left Behind DLC announced. That now... fails to load for me. Uh-oh. It's been sitting there this whole time, and it did not load. But wow. That, that one's the one to fail to load. <laughs> um, Anyhow. I can explain. Yeah. I, uh, you'll be controlling... A, you'll be taking control of Ellie and a DLC that takes place before the main game. Now, if you're wondering what this is, this is actually based off a comic, and I will look up the name of it. I'm assuming it's the same name that the DLC has. Because um, there's a comic series that uh, uh, looks at how Ellie got bit and became infected. And spoilers, this is that story. Um... Oh, no, it's not that. It's called uh, American Dreams. It's a four-issue comic series that uh, tells the exact same story this DLC will be telling. Hmm. Um, it tells the story of Ellie and a survivor named Riley as they explore the Boston area before the game. And this tells the story of how Ellie got bit and infected. Just to spoil that part, because... It, that story already exists, but now we get it in DLC fashion. Um, it's coming in early 2014 and will be part of the game season pass. So yeah, if you wondered how Ellie got bit. This is the story, and if you want to see it ahead of time, check out American Dreams, which is the prequel comic to Last of Us that looks at Ellie's character. Um, I've got nothing else to say. Mm, me neither. Cause that's pretty much because when I first saw this, I'm like, "Yep, it's that one." As I recognized it from my perusings on the Last of Us wiki. Hmm. And that will take care of our large batch of news that took us about two hours to do. Yep. So we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with our big topic, releases in Quick Draws of the Week. So stay tuned, folks.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gaming Saloon as we start a big topic discussion. And this is going to be a kind of a, a broad one, so we don't have anything to kind of like show off on the stream. But we're talking the modern FPSs. And kind of talking about the criticisms that they receive. And, you know, why people love and hate them. So, I'm not going to lie. This kind of spawned off me just, just like, uh, about the Battlefield 44 reviews that were coming in. Because they were so focused on the multiplayer and really kind of just about threw the single player out the window for the most part in terms of its final um, addressing of it. And it was it, it got at me because I'm just like, it's not a fair judgment of the title. Because it, it doesn't really feel like a fair judgment of the title. I know if Glock was here, he'd say that the single player really should hold more than the multiplayer. But in my opinion, they should hold e equally. Yeah, they they should hold equally. And here's my thought about, and here's my thought about the Battle for reviews. Just to get them out there, I have no problem with how people feel how people are talking about them. I just feel how they're weighing the single player versus the multiplayer in terms of scoring it and grading it and recommending it. It feels so much in favor of the multiplayer side that the single player is all but an afterthought. And I feel that's a disservice to the game and the people making them because they're not getting uh, good feedback from reviewers because if reviewers are all they're talking about is the multiplayer they're not getting any feedback on the single player so they can't improve the single player it's which is just going to make it worse and worse yes I mean when you have a single player where you are playing as the squad leader and you are a mute protagonist if people directly address you with a question and either your squad mates answer for you or it's an awkward silence there are problems here oh yeah I mean, seriously. You're playing as a squad leader, and you never give a single command to the squad. Outside of gameplay. Just, what the hell? But that's 